Hey everybody, it's Maria from Cardbomb.com. I'm so glad to have you joining me today as I'm hopping along with my friends from the Creating Kindness design team on a video hop. Today the card I'm sharing has an awful lot going on, including watercoloring, a hot tip for masking, and one of the inkiest disasters I've ever had on camera. <laughs> Stay tuned. For today's project, I will be using the Flower Shop stamp set from Stampin' Up! and the Coordinating Pansy Punch. I'm also going to be using this big strip of post-it tape. It's really cool because the entire back is sticky. So on a post-it note, you just have the top flap that's sticky, but on this tape, the whole thing is sticky. So you're essentially punching out a sticker. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love doing the masking technique, but I don't always love fussy cutting out one billion of whatever stamp I need to mask. So this is a really quick and efficient way that you can punch out masks if you have a coordinating stamp set, and I'm sure that you could even do it with a framelit. Now that I have all my little pansies punched out, I'm going to start stamping. So I've selected the stamp that I want to use, and I've placed it inside of my stamparatus, and I'm stamping on a piece of watercolor paper. I've decided to use Memento ink today because my plan is to stamp multiple images of the same flower stamp across the width of my watercolor paper. And I'm going to stamp those, like I said, in this Memento ink because after I do some watercoloring, my plan is to use my blends markers, my alcohol markers, to add some extra shading and depth to the flowers. So I wanted to make sure that when I got to the point of using my alcohol markers that I wasn't going to make my ink bleed or run as I added in the coloring with my markers. So now you know my master game plan. Stamp, mask, stamp, mask, watercolor, add in some detail, definition, and shading with my blend markers. So now back to what we're doing. So I'm using my Stamparatus and this positioning tool is really fantastic because it allows me to get a perfect image every single time. I can place the stamp on the paper where I want the image to be stamped and then I pick it up with the, with the plastic plate, the door that swings shut there, and I can ink it up and stamp it and I can stamp it again if I didn't get a perfect image or if I just want a darker bolder image I can stamp it again as well. So that's why you see me stamping multiple times is because I wanted a really bold line for the look of this card. Now something that I do want to warn you about these post it this post it tape is really great for masking but the top of it is a little bit slick and it doesn't absorb ink. So right now you can see that I just stamped on top part of part of the post-it tape. If you were to rub your finger across that, you might smear the ink. So my caution to you is that if you decide to use this, just be aware that it is smearable when it's on top of that post-it tape. The stamping that you've done on your watercolor paper won't smear, but I'm just making sure to dry it so that I'm making sure that it won't smear off the top of the post-it tape and that it is completely dry on my watercolor paper before I put the little sticker on top. I'm also not showing you every single step, but I want you to be to take note that off to the left, every time that I finish stamping in one place, I am cleaning and drying my stamp so that I don't... Um, contaminate my paper in any way as I move the stamp. So now I've cleaned off my stamp because I'm done stamping across my paper and I'm going to remove my watercolor paper from the Stamparatus and put it off to the side. Now I'm using my piercing tool to do the big reveal and I'm just peeling off those masks and I'm going to save them because you can use them again and again. Now that you've punched them you can use them until they're not sticky anymore. Now there were a couple of small places where I didn't get a perfect stamped image due to the lip of my mask, so I'm using a fine tip sharpie to fix those now. After a quick heat set, we're going to be ready to start the watercoloring. So now I've grabbed my aqua painter. Do you see the ink bleeding? <laughs> that is not at all what I had planned. But don't you worry, I've got a fix for that. If I just spritz a little less water on it, that should solve everything, right? Mm. <laughs> I can't even stop laughing because this project just went so horribly awry and I just decided I wasn't going to throw it away. I was just going to keep going <laughs> and just see what happened. And if I had to scrap the whole video and the whole project, then I would. And I am not at all loving the look of these beautiful inks mixed with black ink. 
So here's a lesson to you folks. If you're going to watercolor, don't use memento ink. And I knew that, but somehow I jumped forwards to, to the end of my project where I was going to be using my, my blends alcohol markers. And I was thinking, make sure you don't smear the ink at the end of the project. You would hate to ruin your project right at the end. So I guess instead I'll just ruin it right now <laughs> and try and figure out how to fix it. So you saw me lay down a little bit of color. I'm using Melon Mambo, Pumpkin Pie, Daffodil Delight, Lemon Lime Twist, Pacific Point, and Elegant Eggplant. Now I'm going in with my Aqua Painter and I'm just adding a second layer of color. And I'm just trying to get a, a first wash of color that is really going to stick. I'm still concerned at this point that I'm going to have to scrap this project and I'm trying to limit the amount of bleeding that the ink is doing. But honestly... The ink isn't bleeding as much as it did on those first two or three layers of water, and I'm really relieved about that. I am getting some ink bleeding over on the right where that elegant eggplant is, but it's really easy to pick that up with my with just a paper towel. So I'm going to hit this first layer of um, wash that's going to stay, of color wash that's going to stay on the paper with my heat tool and make sure that it's set. I'm just using my napkin to go in and dab up any areas that have a little bit too much black ink or are a little bit too saturated or muddied for my taste. And uh, we're just going to set this first layer and now I'm going back in and I'm going to add more color, color by color, layer by layer, until I get this looking the way that I want. And as I was coloring, you know, I really wasn't liking that darker ink look that was kind of just permeating all of the flowers and I was trying to figure out how I was going to make those flowers pop off the page and I realized that if I was careful about the placement of my color and I really tried to make the darkest part of the color sit behind the flowers then my flowers would come forward to the front of the card more so you can see that I'm intentionally going in and creating the darker shadows behind the flowers instead of just covering them in an even wash with the whole background. And luckily for me, that did work and create a little bit of depth in the card. So now I'm just finishing up this layer of color with some of that elegant eggplant and I'm going to heat set it and that's it. I've decided that that's enough color, but I wasn't happy with the separation of the background and the flowers. So I decided to mask those flowers off once again and use a basic black stamp and write marker marker to flick some ink all over the background just to add a little bit more interest. And then I'm going back in with that same fine tip Sharpie and I'm darkening up some of the details that I lost when I bled my ink all over the place. I also went in with a white gel pen and added some details to the center. And now I am finally bringing in that smoky slate blend marker that I had dreamed about using. Um, finally here it is and guess what that memento ink is not bleeding now that I'm using my alcohol marker so I'm using that smoky slate marker to add some shadowing and I started by add adding it just to the center of my flowers but I thought that that looked too choppy so I went ahead and filled in parts of the entire petals then I grabbed my jelly roll pen and I added some more detail and that really did help the flowers to stand out from the background a lot more then I grabbed my fine tip glue pen and I started adding some adhesive to the top of all of the flowers so that they would really shimmer and shine and I love the way that they pop off the page now. I added some embellishments and heat embossed my sentiment which I think is just perfect for this card because it really was a little bit of a laugh, a smile, and everything else. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad to have you with me as always. I hope you'll come back soon for another video and before you take off please head down to my description below and click on the video links to all of my friends on the Creating Kindness Design team as well as the product links that I've added below. Thanks again for stopping by today, and I'll see you back here real soon. Bye!